I have a new computer. And here it is. My very first Commodore Amiga. And wow, that is really, really nasty. In the pictures, I thought it was yellowed from plastic decay, but this does not look right. I... These keys are repulsive. I mean, it is a bit yellowed, but a lot of that's just going to be dirt. So I wanted this because I want... It's the smallest Amiga, and I don't have unlimited space. And also it's got an ID hard drive inside and a PCMCA slot for expansion, both of which I kind of wanted. And I also wanted a classic Amiga and not one of the newer ones because, frankly, there are computers that do fast better than Amigas do. So this isn't brilliant. What have we got? The description was not brilliant, I have to say. So I'm not entirely sure what this is. Is there anything in the trap door? Looks like it's been opened. This is a expansion module. Oh, it's got something. Uh, Amram 60 something one. And this switch here is set to off, off, RAM, and is that one or two positions? It's only one, so it's only on or off. So I think this must be a RAM expansion. I Let's see what's on the other side. A oh, oh, that's bad. You see what this is? This is one of the dreaded Vata batteries and it's corroded. Okay. Uh, don't see any sign of corrosion here or on the connector, but that battery is coming right out now. These things are the worst. This will be a combo real-time clock RAM card. Yeah. See that? Well, I can't throw it into the bin because it's a battery. And there's corrosion here. So this is going to need white vinegar. I'll just go and grab some. So here we have a cap full of some of my favourite cleaning vinegar. Cleaning because I bought a bottle of it by mistake a few years ago and really don't have anything to do with it. So I use it for this. So we're going to dab some on the affected area, which looks like quite a lot of it actually. You can already see it start to bubble. That's neutralizing the alkaline goop in the that came out of the battery. It's this doesn't look particularly complicated to be honest. This board, so it's probably repairable. But slather lots on. But it's possible that I in fact do not have a nice memory expansion board for my new Amiga. It was sold as working, so hopefully they at least turn it on. Okay. So that then... Just put a bit more on the particularly bad bit. So that's going to go aside. And let's see what the rest of it's like. Well, for a start, there are no screws. Well, there are just enough screws to be bad. So let's try and get these off. 
come on, focus. Yeah, I've decided that manual focus just doesn't work very well, so I'm going with auto. But auto also is a little bit problematic. Okay, these screws are extremely um, mangled. This one If that will focus and zoom in enough, you can see is mostly missing its actual screw bit. So that goes in the bin, and I think I missed. Let's try the other one. That's come out, just it's wedged in something. There's a couple of interesting screws here which don't look original. I'm not particularly well versed with Amigos. So, yeah, that screw hasn't come out. I'm going to need to find a placement from somewhere. interesting. E, that looks like glue. I think someone may have tried to, to glue that screw back in. Either that or the case is coming apart. Ha! Attempted repair by unauthorised persons violates warranty. And a reasonably high serial number. Yeah, this is not valuable in any way. I actually want this to use and to play the odd game on. So... Uh, I need to remove the keyboard membrane, which just pulls out. And this is the LED strip. And inside we have a moderately filthy motherboard. This looks okay. I mean, it all needs a massive clean. Look at the amount of gunk on the keys and the case and the motherboard and probably the drive heads too. But... Uh, the new cotton bud. What's this? That's just fluff. Oh, the IDE hard drive is one of the reasons I wanted the 600. Um, I don't know if this hard drive works, but I have a couple of possible replacements. And, of course, there's always a um, compact flash adapter instead. Mm -hmm. There's not much in the way of capacitors. Don't see anything terribly badly wrong. I, I don't believe that these machines can be damaged by bad caps, though it's possible it won't work properly, but I think I'm safe to operate it without changing the, the capacitors. I'm going to guess that no one has recapped this board because otherwise someone would have noticed the, uh, the horrible RAM expansion board. Yeah. Okay. Now the the vinegars had a chance to operate a bit. You can see. Uh, hopefully the camera will pick it up. You can see the dark patches in the these tracks. 
that means that the corrosion has got in underneath and has eaten through them. I think this board doesn't work. I mean, there's nothing terribly complicated. It might be fixable. Back's not brilliant either, to be honest. But that, I think, is a different project. OK, well, I absolutely need to clean the disc heads because this is repulsive. And I think I actually want to take the motherboard out as well so that I can clean the case. So, how do these floppy drives come out? There's a screw here. And that'll be what these other two screws are for. Most likely, unless it's this. Is that focused? Uh, maybe. There's a notch in the plastic which looks suspiciously like somebody has... It's not moulded. I think someone's tried to get in there. Yeah, that does not come out as is, but someone's obviously tried. So I think it's these. Well, that screw's wrecked. That's been well gouged. Not this one. I don't think there's actually any... Re I might be able to... Yeah, it's turning. But it's a close thing. goes and you is that come on focus focus make up your mind there we go that's garbage okay whoops so now the floppy drive comes out and yeah that's quite disgusting inside It's a Chinon. Looks like a fairly normal PC drive. It is. Uh, Amigas have fairly special floppy drives, uh, floppy drive interfacing. A lot of the protocols done in software. Yeah, this is going to need to come apart. It's full of gunk. Okay, so we're going to unplug these cables. They look intact. The hard drive. Unplugs will also go aside. Right, what have we got here? That looks like a bodge, but it looks like a factory bodge. Is that dust there? Yeah, that's just horrible fluff. This thing's disgusting. Uh, this is the keyboard connector. We've got audio, composite video, it actually has an RF modulator, that's nice. I didn't know that. That will actually help me with another project where I need an RF signal. And you can't really get them anymore these days. So, motherboard screws, big, nasty, self-tapping plastic 
underboard screws. Uh, joystick ports, uh, disk drive, serial port, parallel port, video port. I should be able to plug this thing into the VGA monitor above my desk, which is well, above my workbench, which is in the, over there, out of camera range, but I will need the appropriate connector. Volve, I'll have a good look through the box to see if it's there. The RF modulator is... Ugh. Not in great shape. I think that's just rust. Wow. Okay, there should be another screw somewhere. to remove the motherboard, unless it's just wedged, or is there another screw? I don't think there is. I think this is just uh, wedged in place somehow. It's definitely more brute force than I really like. There we go. And this comes out. And it's rusty. Doesn't look too bad. Okay, well. That's got the bottom shell off, and you can see all the horrible, horrible gunk. Okay, let's take a look at the top shell. And let's see if we can take the keyboard off. It should just unclip. This also needs washing. This, is, this side is probably worse. There we go. Oh. This LED panel is not coming with. Wow, look how yellow those are. The keycaps will need doing too. And what fastens this on? Oh, look, glue. That's what fastens this on. That will make cleaning this interesting. Okay, well... I think at this stage I probably need to figure out whether it works or not, so... Let's go for another rummage through the box looking for the power supply and for any other bits of hardware, and I will go and grab my um, mini-TV. Okay, well, here is the mini-TV, with hopefully the right power supply. Uh, if I prop it up like that, that's a reasonable compromise. Is plugged into the composite port. I have the power supply, which is just as filthy as everything else. This will all need cleaning very thoroughly. So we plug her in and lean back. And 
and nothing. Okay, let's try uh, attaching that LED strip. See if we at least get a power light. Okay, so on. Power light. Right. Now it's possible... Okay, it's just tried to boot. But there is no floppy drive. Not sure why the screen... I know why the screen isn't turning on. Let's try turning the power on at the mains. There we go. Good. Kickstart 2.0. Looking for a floppy to boot off. Um... You know what? Let's just plug the hard drive in. I wonder if there's any actual Amiga software on this. I mean, you'd think so, because like, what else is there going to be on the hard drive inside an Amiga? Okay, and... Wow, that's loud! And nothing on the screen, you know? And it's squeaking. I don't know if this if it's uh, appearing on the microphone. But usually I, I expect hard drives to be a bit less scrapey than that. So this thing is quite possibly completely defunct. No big deal. Honestly, having a hard drive this noisy is going to drive me insane. Let's just try power cycling again. Ah, we've got something. This thing did a thing. This isn't. Okay, so that's the kickstart ROM again. My suspicion is that the hard drive is toast. I will try this with a real computer uh, and see if I can get anything out of it. But for now, let's just unplug it. I will use one of my others. This chip is getting a bit warm. All the Amiga chips have code names, but I don't see anything printed on the motherboard for this one. But it does look like this PCB works, which is nice. So, next is to clean and reassemble. Wow. Ah, uh, good grief, this is crusty. Uh, this is going to involve lots of IPA. So I'm just going to give it a bit of a dab on camera to see what happens. And then I think I will do the rest of this offline. Yeah, can... 
Can you hear the scraping noise this is making? Look at that. So I live in Switzerland and the seller wouldn't send to, wouldn't post to Switzerland. So I had to get this uh, sent to an address in the UK and then forwarded on to me, which costs an extra 30 pounds for shipping plus 40 francs uh, import duty. Yeah, that's cleaner, but yuck. And the person who did the shipping for me did open it up to make sure that it was actually, you know, a computer and not a pile of bricks. And they said that it did look as if this had belonged to a smoker. And I thought they were exaggerating. Well, those are better, even if they are covered with fluff. Hmm. I don't like that green stuff on the cotton bud. Yeah. And so I don't know whether this is actually due to corrosion from the battery or whether it's uh, just, you know, copper tarnish. But blech. Okay, I'm going to do some more cleaning offline and come back. Okay, I have given the motherboard a clean. I've done the contacts and brushed all the dust out with a carbon brush. So the next thing is this floppy drive. Now, this is one of the reasons I wanted it. I wanted to test my Flux Engine Amiga writer. It should work. It's been tested by other people, but I always like having a... Uh, I like being able to test these myself as well. Uh, plus, I want to do some actual Amiga development. Also, the Amiga has quite a lot of good games. Uh, other things which were in the box, by the way, are about, there we go, 400 Amiga floppy disks. And heaven knows what's on them all. Just glancing down at the box, I see Lotus Turbo Challenge. Okay, that's in fact the only labelled one I can see. So what this probably is, is a million pirate copies of stuff. Hopefully somewhere in there, there will be a genuine legally licensed version of Workbench. Uh, this unclips. So, revealing, whoo, revealing horrors. Can you see in there that that's disgusting? The heads do not look in great shape. Okay. Uh, I'm not cleaning the heads here. I'm just brushing the most of the dust out. Yeah, that's not supposed to be on a disc head.
it's me blowing in it. The Amiga is 68,000 based and it has a interesting microkernel OS that is very well thought of, okay, admittedly very well thought of mostly by Amiga fans, but be interesting to explore. I have a compiler project and a 68,000 backend. Actually, I've got a 68,000 backend for the Atari ST. But it'd be really satisfying to get this to get it working on a real Amiga. I mean, it's not like the Amiga is short of compilers and programming systems, but you can never have too many. Okay, just going round again with the wet cotton bud to pick up more dust. I think this really wants to be disassembled. A bit of corrosion in here too. Hmm. Yeah, I am not happy with that, not at all. Um, I'm a little nervous about putting my discs in it, to be honest. If it is an ordinary floppy drive, I do have another one that I can plug in. It's actually a combo floppy drive uh, and card reader. But of course, you can't use the card. Wouldn't be able to use the card reader half on the on the Amiga. The card reader is USB, but the floppy drive bit is actually an ordinary floppy drive. Uh, yeah, I will actually do that. I am just really unhappy with this thing. This is going to need a proper tear down and clean. I may do a uh, a separate video on that. Okay, well, that's now reassembled and will be put aside. The next bit is the keyboard. Now, somewhere I have a key puller. Key puller. Um, I've actually done some clearing up recently on my desk, which means I now cannot find anything because everything is where it's supposed to be. So we have fairly thin keycaps, delicate springs, and underneath here is a membrane and lots and lots of fluff. So these are all gonna have to come off. So there you go, and I'm gonna to have to wash my hands. You can see that my fingertips are brown from the stuff and this. You can see all the 
fluff and whatever it is. I'm going to have to brush this down outside because I do not want this in my house. Yes, well, you can see that a lot of the keys are really quite yellowed, so I'm going to need to at some point bleach them with hydrogen peroxide. I don't think I'm going to do that today. I mean, it'll work perfectly well yellowed. I want to do some experimentation first. Um, I do not have a ready source of UV that I'm willing to trust, so I'd want to use heat instead. Uh, you need to catalyze the reaction or it's far too slow to be useful. So essentially all you do is you boil your keycaps in hydrogen peroxide solution, but the temperature can't be too high or the keycaps will melt. And it can't be too low or you'll be waiting forever. So I want to do some experimentation. I've got a heat source up to about 40, but that may not be good enough. Okay, well, time to start cleaning, I suppose. Well, the keycaps are now dry, or at least dry enough, and I have a handy reference, so let us start reassembling. Okay, well, that was slightly more exciting than it should have been due to springs and things getting lost. I particularly wanted this model of A600 because it has the UK key map with double quote here, at sign here, um, and backslash and pipe here. It's interesting that these two keys have been left blank rather than expanding the shift and return key. And wow, that is incredibly yellow, but it should work. So let's start reassembling the machine itself. And also the bottom shell, wherever I've put it. Here we are. Now, nice and clean. This was all scrubbed offline in the kitchen sink. So, now the problem we were having taking it out was the joystick and mouse ports. So this just pushes into place. It's not quite in.
There we go. That wasn't too bad. Um, and now I need to remember where I put the motherboard screws, which I think maybe just been pushed aside, which isn't so great. I've got the keyboard, uh, the floppy drive screws there. Let's try some generic screws. Oh, I remember these. These were the nasty self-tapping screws. I think I may have actually disposed of them because they were too nasty. So I'll have to find screws that fit. That's just a bit too big. Strip of these. Yeah. Okay, so that should hold the motherboard in. I think it was just the one screw. Now there's another one here. Let's find another similar one. Ah, no, this was the floppy drive mounting post. It was just this one. Okay, so the keyboard clips into the top shell so we don't want to put that in yet now the next thing we need to do is to reassemble the floppy drive i did say that i was going to replace this with another one from my stash but it turns out that you can't because this one is configured via the jumpers to output ready rather than disk change on one of the lines and uh the Amiga wants ready. And my other drives aren't configurable. Or if they are configurable, I don't know how. Plus, the front is rather different. The Amiga drive doesn't have the fascia plate, which is easy enough to remove. But it's also got a very specific size and shape of eject button to project out through a hole in the case. So that's annoying. So this thing is part of the mount, which goes on. That bit hooks under there. Yeah, that's another reason why we need this specific drive. Uh, this plate is used to actually, it goes, doesn't go here. Ah, that goes here. And is used to stand the drive off the motherboard. So that will screw on like this. Yep. And these two holes are for these. So these need attaching and these should be standard screws. I've got lots of these on my desk. Now this, it's got one screw here. That will be one of these. Actually, these three will be these three. So let's try a different one. Uh, 
Okay. So this should now sit firmly like that with one screw there are should be two the same and one that's not so this one will be for the motherboard that's not a good screw but it should work Whoops. Um, yeah, the, the plastic post underneath has is dying, so that's not actually fastened on very well. The screw won't tighten. Okay, we also do need the floppy connector, which of course goes underneath this, so I should have wired that up before I try to reassemble. And let's see, it goes this way around. So the red stripe should be pin one, pin one is there. So let's just put a little bit of contact cleaner in. Okay, and in that end, so this, uh, this end of the cable isn't keyed, which is irritating. So, where is pin one? I th I can see a mark on the connector on the left, which is about the right sort of geometry here. So let's just try that. And while I'm at it, let's just... Put some of this in here. Hook it up. And then this should drop in place. Yes, that is more or less correct. Yeah, that's not good. That post is completely gone. That will probably be why the um, yeah, the screw has in fact just fallen out. Okay, well, let's screw it up here in instead. This should be all right, provided it, the machine isn't turned upside down and shaken. The plastic here isn't in great shape either. one so I believe that post has now actually broken let's just try it again oh yeah it just pushes down okay That's terrible. What have we got in the glue line? I've got some of this. This dries brittle, but put a dot there.
and that should hold the screw in. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Uh, right, the next bit would be the hard drive. The hard drive should sit here. It does not appear to be screwed in at all, it's just held in by the case, which is kind of odd. However, the hard drive is completely fried. I've tried this in my PC with a USB converter, and it just doesn't work. Uh, it spins up, it makes horrible grating noises, uh, metallic shrieking, sounds of imminent bearing failure, and is generally not in a good shape. So I'm not going to put that back in. I am, if I can find the right screwdriver, let's try this one, going to Wow. Those screws are well seized. I am going to attempt to remove the mounts and put that into the computer, just so I know where it is. Hmm. I'm going to try and take the lid off this hard drive and see if I can oil it and make it work at least once. That screw is dead, hopefully not completely dead. Because if I can pull whatever's on it off it, that will be nice. Okay, well, these screws are free. The reason these are seized is probably because the drive gets very hot. This is an early, very early notebook drive. I believe it's 20 megabytes. That's M, uh, megabytes with an M, not gigabytes with a G. So what do I have that might open this? No. I'm going to have to saw this. Yep. Okay. Going to get a hacksaw. So the way you do this when a screw is mangled beyond repair is you try to cut a slot in the top. Doesn't need to be particularly big. Just need a little bit more. Okay, uh, and that gives enough purchase for a slot screwdriver to unstick it. There we go. And then you remove the screw and you throw it away. Okay, um, I'm just going to wipe this down to get the metal dust off it. So this will just sit into place in its slots. Uh, was it this way around? It was this way around. Um, and I also have the rather precious IDE connector. 
uh, with one red stripe which goes on pin one. Let's add our contact cleaner. I'm going to order myself a uh, SD card adapter for use as a hard drive in this thing. Uh, it turns out that while I do have several notebook drives, they are all SATA. So uh, this I won't don't have anything to replace this with, which is a shame. Um, and I believe that is the top the this part of it done. So let's go on to the top shell, which should be fairly straightforward. So the keyboard clips into place here. This, this wire goes through this slot. So and just clips into place. Okay, so all we need to do now is plug in the this connector for the LEDs. and the ribbon connector for the keyboard. Uh, this isn't a, a simple friction fit. It's actually got a clamp on it, which I need to lift. Like so. Um, I'm wondering, let's put some contact cleaner in here. So this plugs on here. And this, I'm afraid there's going to be no view of because it's awkward. Pushes into the slot and then the connector goes down. Okay. So now, uh, this would be the time when we would reattach the, the memory expansion, which goes in here in the trapdoor. However, further investigation has shown there's actually, hopefully this will show up, green in the connector here. So I think this is defunct. It needs some careful inspection with a continuity tester soaking in assorted chemicals and probably a lot of repair. So I am not going to touch that for now. But the hatch does go back on. And we should be ready to go. So I will go and attempt to dig up a that's not a bad keyboard. So I'm going to try and go through that pile of floppy disks, see if I can find a workbench disk. And then we'll fire it up and see how it goes. All the 